real quick, just wanted to show you how we power all of our electric fences and all of our electric netting. So what we've got here is my uh, DIY solar powered energizer. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to build this with links in the description below the video where you can buy all these materials. Uh, we raise pasture poultry on our farm, but we don't use uh, chicken tractors or chicken shelters. We just use electric netting. Uh, it works very well, but there's a couple of things that you have to do. Uh, because we don't have uh, direct access to power out here, uh, we use solar energizers. But it basically consists of about five parts, five main parts. So you've got a solar panel. Uh, I recommend to use between a 75 and 100 watt solar panel for the size charger we're gonna use. Uh, the charger itself, which I like the Speedrite 6000. This is three times more joule output than even the most expensive uh, solar panel units we could find. So this is going to work really well if you're running multiple nets. You know, we'll run three, four, and 100 foot long nets in a series, poultry nets. Those take a lot of juice to run them. So uh, this has enough juice to power three or four nets and really uh, keep the predators away. If you don't have a high power enough charger, what's gonna happen is the predator's gonna touch it and they'll go right through it. It's not gonna affect them and the net's not gonna serve its purpose. Now the problem with solar energizers is um, even the nicest, most expensive ones we bought uh, just had real crappy Chinese batteries in them that didn't last. Uh, they didn't have enough output. The batteries would die on a couple of cloudy days uh, and then they'd be shot. And then, you know, even the most expensive and the largest solar power chargers we could find, which are 1.8 joules, and we're spending five, six hundred dollars a piece for this all-in-one charger, uh, would just were not getting the job done. They didn't have enough juice, uh, and the batteries kept wearing out. And so, what I did was I decided to build my own, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. The other item we need is a um, solar powered charge controller and a battery, and that's it. So you've got your battery, your solar powered charge controller, your charger and your solar panel and something to put it all in. So we use a seven gallon bucket. So in order to make this solar powered unit, uh, it's real simple. We take our solar panel. Again, I recommend 80 to 100 watts. Uh, we drill a couple holes in the top side of the bucket here so we can feed the solar panel wires through. Uh, we put our 50 amp hour battery on the bottom. So this is a sealed lead acid 55 amp hour battery so about 50 amp hours is good and it'll fit in a seven gallon bucket and we put our solar charge controller on top of that and then we have our speed right uh electric fence charger as well and it all will fit in this seven gallon bucket it will not fit in a five gallon bucket but you could also use just a tupperware and this would fit in it but i'm gonna show you how to wire it all up so basically the first thing you want to do is put your battery in your bucket get you a 12 gauge wire, positive and negative, red and black, and wire those to the battery. Next thing you do is you attach your red and black battery to the solar charge controller. Now on the solar charge controller, there's different models, but they're all the same. You have what looks like a solar panel with two inputs, a battery with two inputs, and then a light bulb with two inputs. Your light bulb is your load or your charger. So it's six wires that have to go in here. So the battery has a positive and negative. So you're gonna put your positive and negative battery wire here where it has battery. You're just gonna insert the wires and tighten it down. You're gonna put your solar panels here where it has the picture of the solar panel. So your two solar panel wires go in here. You tighten those nuts down. And then your load is your charge controller. Our power supply that's in the back of the charge controller of our Speedrite charger here um, has two wires, a positive and negative. Those two wires get connected to our load here, so positive and negative. And then the charger, green is ground, so we have a wire that runs to out through another hole in our bucket that goes to a black clip on our ground rod. And red we use for power, and that runs to a clip which we connect to our fence. So the wires coming out of the charge controller, the black runs to a black clip on our ground rod in the, in the dirt. The red, this wire, runs through the bucket and clips on to this wire, which is connected to our electric fence. And that's how it's all rigged up. This wire in the back of the Speedrite charger is the one that's actually connected to our solar charge controller. Now what the solar charge controller does is it keeps your battery topped off without overcharging it. Uh, it keeps it at a good charge. And these nets work fantastic. We have used these for seven years. Uh, we don't use chicken tractors or shelters. And a lot of times we'll connect three, four, five of these nets together, and that's plenty of juice to power all the way through, as long as we have good grounding, good connections, and it's not 
the net is not touching anything solid. So one thing about these nets is you can't have them touching anything solid. The bottom strand, the horizontal strand on the net is not electrified, so it's okay if it touches the ground. But in the other horizontal strands, you don't want to touch anything solid like trees, branches, a little bit of grass and brush is okay, that's inevitable. But you don't want to touch anything solid like trees, branches, anything like that, because that'll short them out. An 80 to 100 watt solar panel and a 50 amp hour battery allows us to run this even in the winter time, even if we have three or four days of cloudy weather, uh, this system runs, we don't lose power in the battery. Uh, if for some reason our battery does get low, uh, we'll just throw it on the charger or swap it out with a brand new battery. Um, and this system's got a lot of juice. Um, it lasts a long time and it won't wear out. And uh, you can build it for the same price you would pay for something that's that has a third of the charge, uh, that has uh, probably a quarter of the battery power and a quarter of the solar panel power. Actually a fifth of the solar panel power. These should come with like a 20 watt solar panel. So this is a great system. It's worked really well for us. All right, so this is the same setup, just a little bit larger version. This 150 watt solar panel. Um, and then we've just got a Tupperware container in here. Um, we've got a little bit larger battery. This is a 100 amp hour battery, our solar charge controller, and then our charger. This is a smaller charger, this uh, IntelliShock 20, but we could also use the Speedrite for this uh, setup as well. Um, Cause we're just using a small area for this uh, pig fencing. But because it's shadier, we gave it a larger uh, solar panel, a larger battery, um, and it doesn't have to move. So we don't have to worry about it being lightweight. Whereas the other setup, uh, we move every day. Uh, so it's a little bit smaller solar panel, a little bit smaller battery. But yeah, you can scale it up any size you need. So one thing you might notice is our red positive clip is not attached to my fence. That's because I've attached to an insulated wire. And the reason I do that is because we have our um, solar panel around the edge of this wooded area. So if I put the solar panel and everything right next to where the fence is, where those metal clips are where I would normally clip it, uh, it'd be in the shade. The solar panel wouldn't get any sun. So with this insulated wire here, which you got here, 10 or 12 gauge insulated wire, um, I can run a wire, set the solar panel out here in the sunlight where it gets nice sun, keeps the battery charged, and run that wire all the way to the fence and hook it up. Uh, so that's why we use that clip on uh, a wa insulated wire, which we run. And then the other end of that insulated wire is attached to the metal clip on the fence. So once you've got everything wired up, uh, put the battery in the bucket first, then your solar charge controller, and then your actual charger on top of that. You can feed your wires through the holes that you drill on the top of the, the bucket. And then we close this up. So I'll put a little lid on it so the water doesn't come in, stays watertight. Um, you could also use a Tupperware, a waterproof Tupperware it works just fine if you don't have a seven gallon bucket. Um, and then we just lean our solar panel up against it to give it a nice uh, orientation to the sun, depending on whether it's summer or winter. But I like the seven gallon bucket because I can pick up the handle and carry it. So I carry the bucket in one hand and the solar panel in the other and it moves. Um, you could also put this whole setup on a small wagon or a cart and carry it with you to make it if you're moving longer distances. But you know, we're, we're moving like a hundred feet at a time because uh, these nets are 100 foot long. So it's pretty easy to just pick it up and move it 100 feet and put it down and set it up again. The sun's lower in the sky, so it'll be more uh, like a 45 degree angle. Summer will be a little bit uh, more tilted back like so to catch that overhead sun. So I hope you found that helpful. Be sure to check the description down below for all the links where you can buy these uh, items. Uh, just to make it easy for you, put a parts list down below in the description. Uh, there's links to Amazon links where you can buy these products uh, just to make it simple for you to find. Um, I do get a tiny little commission if you buy, purchase off that link, um, but if you don't want to use that link or find it somewhere else for cheaper, great too. This has really saved us a lot of headache and agony from not worrying about predators getting our birds or worrying about our charger having a low charge because predators will find out when your charger gets low. They will test it daily and when it gets low, they go through and they kill birds.